Hello friends, welcome to Elkem IES. This is Dr. Rajesh Kumar Mohan. We are starting a new series where we would be discussing Yojana and Kurukshetra magazines. As we have seen that these magazines are very important both for a preliminary examination and mains examinations. However, sometimes it becomes difficult to read and revise these magazines. This is an effort from our institution uh, to, st uh, to start a course where we would be providing very concise notes of the Yojana along with the discussion. The notes would be also available uh, in the description uh, of the video. So let's start uh, the Yojana of April month. So the topic of Yojana is Jal Jivan Mission, Har Gar Jal. Here, various articles are coming, have come, which uh, through which we will try to get a, a hold of uh, various case studies, various aspects related to water management. What are the government initiatives with uh, various uh, uh, in the recent years? All these things would be discussed in detail. So this would be helpful for pre and mains examination, both of them. So let's start today's, uh, first of all, uh, in each, in each uh, magazine, there is initially an editorial. So where the team of the uh, Yojana team tries to tell about the issue. So a uh, 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 relevant thing that when we can see is that there is a Rig Veda quote that is given here. We can uh, write it as Rig Veda 10, 9. So the quote go goes like this. And in fact, we can use this quote uh, in any uh, any matter related to water. So, gracious, be divine waters, be there for our drink and stream on us bliss and happiness. So the importance and appreciation of the waters is being highlighted in Rig Veda. Considering the importance that a water have in life of various citizens and there is a cultural connect also, there are social dimensions also. In fact, there is an article where water and gender related issues are being linked. So let's start the Yojana. The first article uh, goes by the name taking water to every home and soul. The author of this article is Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, who is Union Ministry, Minister of uh, Jal Shakti. Jal Shakti, as we know, is a new ministry that has been created after merging two ministries. Ministry of Water Resources, Gangari Jivanation and Ministry of... So these uh, uh, two ministry combinations have resulted in Ministry of Jal Shakti. This article deals primarily with Jal Jivan Mission. So as we will see, Jal Jivan Mission, Jal Shakti Mission, uh, Atal Bhujal mission, these uh, then uh, Namami Gange, these would be the four recurring themes in the various articles. In fact, any water related issue, the government initiatives, these four programs would be of very, of very much res uh, re relevance. So, what uh, the author is saying here is, is that it, it is giving case study. The case studies of Tashiganj village. So this is a village in Lahul Spiti. And it is, uh, it has a distinction that this village is having uh, 
a polling booth at the highest elevation in the world. Recently, it got first household tap connection. So this case study we can quote. At the same time, we can quote about example of Goa and Telangana. These two states have uh, have are are given suction. That is, they have achieved hundred percent coverage of household tap connection. So after this. Uh, There are certain minor details that are being uh, discussed in this uh, article. First, with regard to Jalji One Mission. So, the broad targets are highlighted in this article. One is that what is a Jalji One uh, Mission? So, it is a mission which has been launched with an aim to provide tap water connection. To every rural household. Remember, it is rural household. When we will compare it from with Jal Shakti Mission, it is for both rural and urban areas. So that is the broad ex uh, objective of this uh, mission. Next is uh, what are the other programs? Atal Bhujal Yojana. So this is basically a yojana in order to facilitate sustainable groundwater management. The aim is sustainable groundwater management with an emphasis on community participation. So there is a focus on demand side management of groundwater. And it is launched in seven states and a focus has been given uh, on uh, those water stressed areas. It, in fact, it is said that 20%, 22% of groundwater resources in India are overexploited. Next, this uh, article is telling about Swachh Bharat mission. So Swachh Bharat mission is also uh, having water linkages. In fact, it is focusing on sanitation and hygiene. We have re reached open defecation free status. So this is one more scheme related to water. Next is Jal Shakti mission. So as we say, uh, know that it is uh, uh, focused on both urban and rural areas, it is launched in, in a mission mode of, uh, pattern in order to promote awareness about water conservation. There are five key interventions under the Jal Shak, uh, Shakti mission. So what are these uh, five key interventions? First is there is a fo focus on water conservation and rain water harvesting. Second, focus on recharge and reuse structures. Third is renovation of traditional water bodies. Water bodies. Fourth is watershed development. And fifth is intensive afforestation. So finally, the author quotes uh, uh, gives an example that uh, if, if we see Israel, it is placed in a what uh, in a desert region. The region has very less of water availability. But it was the efforts of legendary Ben Gurion, who was the first prime minister of Israel, that now Israel has turned this. Uh, desert into a promised land and the country has transformed uh, from a water scarce nation to a water secure nation. Water scarce to water secure. So all the initiatives that the government is taking are aimed at ensuring water security. 
So this was this article. So it gives a broad outlook. What are the various government initiatives? It gives two case studies. We can see that uh, uh, it gives uh, the case study of Tashiganj village, which is in Lahul Speti, Goa and Telangana. Then the various uh, broad uh, um, outline of what is Jal Jivan mission, what is Atal Bhujan Yojana, what is Swachh Bharat mission, what is Jal Sakti mission, and again, uh, Ben Gurion example of how Israel turned turn from a water a scarce to water secure nation. So that was that was the uh, article, and the title of article was taking water uh, to every home and soul. So next article, let's move on to the second article. It is titled Water Security. It is written by Suresh Bhattu. And this is a very nice article. It is first of all giving facts related to water availability and what are the government in, uh, in initiatives and a very elaborate uh, list of what are the steps that the government has done is given in this article. Suresh Prabhu, who is also a union minister. So first is what about water availability in India? If we say India constitutes 16% per of world population, we have to remember these facts. And this is a very uh, commonly quoted fact. But only 4% of the world's resources, water resources. In fact, the total annual bioavailability of precipitation that is rain, uh, rainfall and snowfall in India is about 4,000 kilometers uh, kilometer cube. Surface and replenishable groundwater, this is precipitation, then groundwater and surface water. Is 1,800 69 kilometer cube. So, and at the, uh, this is the basic geographical idea. Then, what with the uh, data with regard to the crisis situation, the grim situation prevalent in India? So, Niti Ayo comes with something called Composite Water Management Index. It uses a life cycle approach in order to know uh, how the states are well placed in water management. In this report in 2018, the Niti Ayo predicted that by 2020, 21 countries would reach zero groundwater. Uh, 21 cities will reach, will reach zero groundwater levels. And by 2030, our water demand would be two times our water supply, resulting in a loss of 6% of GDP in the country. So they, there is a significant need for water governance, a better water governance. So considering all this, government has taken various step, steps. First is, India has been able to achieve many targets way beyond the 2030 target seen for SDGs and the SDG goal number six, which is clean water san and sanitation. So these targets are being achieved in India way before the uh, 2030 target set up by the world. In fact, uh, India became open water, uh, open defecation free. So that target was achieved way before, in fact, 11 years before the 2030 target that is, is given to us. Second is, we have launched Namami Gange program in 2014. So this program is focused at pollution abatement and uh, conservation and rejuvenation of National River Ganga. So it has a very nice um, institutional structure, five-tier structure is there. And um, its goal is to adapt, uh, it is adopting a river basin approach to create 
a clean ganga and focuses on minimum minimal ecological flows flows to maintain water quality in the river these are two initiatives third initiative is that under the chairmanship of dr mehir shah so mehir shah commission has issued a draft national water framework bill 2020 which contains provision for an overarching national legal framework to deal with water related issues and it has principles of protection conservation regulation and management into it so this is a national draft uh, bill which uh, can be uh, and the efforts are there to in order to convert this draft bill into a full fledged act fourth is government is planning to update 2012 national water policy where a focus is on national bureau on water use efficiency so as we will discuss later in the uh, in the later in the uh, video that uh, the water use efficiency has a very significant role uh, in addressing the water scarcity and water crisis that we are in second our uh, next fifth step that was taken by the government was creation of a ministry of jal shakti in 2019 it was created by merging two ministries ministry of water resources river De development and ganga rejuvenation and ministry of drinking water and sanitation after that we launched jal shakti abhiyan so it is a abhiyan which means it is a campaign for water conservation and water security in india through jan andolan seventh step that was taken was launch of jal jeevan mission in the year when india turned 73rd independence day on the 73rd independence day government of india launched jal jeevan mission which a with the focus to provide tap water connection to every rural household and there would be a minimum of 55 liters per capita per day availability of water and the target is to ensure 100% rural household coverage by 2024 so that is jal jeevan mission next step that was taken was atal bhujal yojana atal bhujal yojana so it focuses on ground water man management so in order to improve ground water management especially through community participation it is launched in seven states in india with the support of world bank the there are seven states are gujarat haryana uttar pradesh rajasthan madhya pradesh karnataka maharashtra so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 these seven states are there in which atal bhujan yojana is launched which focuses on ground water management next is that the 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 efforts are being done on interlinking of of rivers the plans are there in order to link pen, peninsula rivers with himalayan rivers rivers 16 himalayan rivers and 14 peninsula rivers the planning is there to interlink them in fact the question was also asked in the mains examination next is various ministries have also taken initiative for example ministry of railways 
has introduced water vending machines at water uh, at railway stations in and at the same time there are jaldoot trains which were sent to maharashtra to supply the water next one is that next step is that we launched a nationwide movement called nisarg raksha nisarg raksha focus is on environmental conservation and water rejuvenation the aim is to train 1 million nisarg rakshaks so that is one village volunteer at uh, with one volunteer at each village so at the same time a forum is being created called nature protector forum at national and state level to ensure that project is implemented it the project in, uh, of a nisarg raksha would be implemented at four levels state district taluk and village level the aim main aim would be to use data analytics to increase the effectiveness of the project and low cost methods using local means to ensure that environmental conservation and water rejuvenation happens in fact nature protector app has also been launched at the same time some elaborate uh, so as we discussed there is also a repetition about the what is a sh jal shakti abhiyan we know it is a, a campaign which will cover both rural and urban areas their targeted communication campaign would be done and focus would be on five areas watershed development water conservation and drain harvesting renovation of traditional and other water bodies recharge structures like reuse bore well and intensive afforestation the details about jal uh, jeevan mission are also there so with this we can get an idea what are the major steps in fact we can enumerate what are the various steps that the government has taken with regard to water related in later articles as we will see will elaborate on these uh, these various schemes so let's move onwards the third article is water future in a climate risk world it is written by sunita narayan who works at center for science and education which is an ngo focusing on research so first of all the author gives evolution of water policy in india so it divides it into 1980s 1990s 2010 decade so before 1980s our water management was focused on irrigation projects the focus was that we will build dams and canals to store and supply water in long distances but later on in 1980s what we found that we experienced many droughts so in a way it became necessary that we focus on change in policies so we changed our policy so we tried to augment water resources so how did we augment resources so the previously focus was on storing water which is there and then supplying it to various areas like from uh, rivers uh, irrigation uh, dams were made and the supply to the agriculture fields was there but the droughts happened so there was lack of supply so the water resources were limited so what what does uh, changes that happened so first thing that uh, was done was the state government launched 
messy programs in order to capture rainwater. So that would augment supply. Then, in fact, Mahatma Gandhi Rural Employment Guarantee uh, efforts, which are not, uh, now being done, also focuses on these water assets that have been built and are being built uh, for capturing the water, uh, rainwater. So next was, it all was also realized that groundwater is a major source. Before that, it was thought that groundwater is a minor source of water for our population. So it is because groundwater is a major source, not only for irrigation, but also for drinking needs. So what uh, we uh, uh, focused was that water uh, water uh, availability was focused on. So now all these things are happening, water droughts are happening. So at the same time, what happened was that groundwater extraction also increased. This resulted in inequitable distribution of water resources in our country. So in 2030, we, we witnessed urban drought. We can call urban drought. So reduced availability of water resources in urban areas. In fact, we can see that Niti Aik also saying that by 2020, approximately 12 cities would have zero groundwater. So now from all this learning, it, it came to us that we should first of all augment our resources. then we should focus on reuse of existing resources because in urban uh, areas, there is a potential for reuse of uh, wastewater. And then we should focus on durability of durability and sustainability of water assets that we create. So in this regard, the author is saying that rainwater harvesting can be done. Also, we need to have a, a refocus on how rainwater harvesting is to be done. We know that rain is decentralized. So we have to capture the rain where it falls. So it has to be a global, uh, so it has to be a, an effort throughout the India, rain ha water harvesting. Second was that in order to ensure water security, we should also focus on increasing water use efficiency. It is said that if we increase water use efficiency by 10% in irrigation, uh, in agriculture sector, we can make our resources available till 2030. The water resources would be available uh, for us till 2030 if we increase water use efficiency in agriculture by uh, just 10%. So we should focus on that. Then water management needs to be focused here we should involve local communities this would ensure that our water policies would be implemented would be sustainable water assets that are created would be long term so this is the article with regard to what was the historical water policy what are the changes that happened in water policy how initially we focused on uh, uh, major irrigation projects then how droughts made us realize that the availability of resources, uh, the water resources are lesser. And in fact, in urban areas also, we experienced less availability of water resources. So we needed a refocus in approach. So 
in fact the uh, flows uh, the learnings are being implemented through new programs like jal jivan mission and jal shakti abhiyan so let's move on to the fourth article it is about ushering social social revolution so the linkage between water and gender is being drawn here it is said that women and girls in india spend approximately 352 minutes a day performing domestic chores and majority of the time is spent on collecting water drinking water so this poses a major challenge for girls especially with regard to girl enrollment then at the same time at some areas the girls and females have to go for long distances in early morning so there women security issue also comes up third aspect is that the females are generally having water related roles especially cooking in majority of the households so any change in water management has impact on females and finally the research has shown, shown the involvement of females in water management is far more effective compared to male males along with this we should realize that water is also a human right in fact in resolution number 64292 of un general assembly water is a is regarded as a human right so <clears throat> further details with regard to jal jeevan mission are provided in this article as we know jal jeevan mission focuses on nal se jal and har ghar jal and target is 2024 the focus is on connecting everyone so one no one should be left behind so this is also a social revolution at the same time jal jeevan mission would require skilled men for like plumbers and men's mansons in order to create which will create opportunities at the village level where the infrastructure would be created it focuses on a bottom up approach where village water and sanitation committees also called pani pancha pani samitis would prepare a five year action plan and 50% of the member of village water and sanitation committee would be from women information technology is being used very nicely and private sector participation through rashtriya jal jeevan kosh in order to enable private players to participate uh, is also being used here so this is the article here some uh, a main point that we can draw is how water this uh, jal jeevan mission is bringing about a social revolution because water has is a human right water is related to gender also then water uh, availability to vulnerable sections can bring about social revolution so the especially the linkage of water and gender can be very helpful next article is about water governance and it is a very informative article it is written by pankaj kumar who is a secretary department of drinking water and sanitation and department of water resources river uh, rejuvenation and uh, Gang, uh, Ganga rejuvenation. So uh, uh, Pankaj Kumar uh, who is there? 
so first again he is talking about statistics so we already have what is the availability of water so we know that uh, precipitation has a uh, contribution of 4000 km cube then the surface and ground water so what are the various contributions so along with that other factor uh, other data is being given utilization of ground water the data says that 78% of water is utilized for agriculture 8% for domestic use 6% for industries and other rest of the 8% goes to the other uses india's per capita water availability is also declining so in 2001 the water availability was 1816 meter cube per person per capita per annum it has reduced to 1545 milli meter cube per capita per annum so now we are a water stress country this is 2011 figure so we have moved through to this from this value to this so we are having a water stress so why we are water stress so for that we should know what is franken mark index so it says that 7 below 1700 meter cube we have water stress so now we are below uh, uh, 1700 meter cube so we can say that india is now a water now a water stressed country now at the same time we should also focus on what are the issues that are there in the water governance so there are four major issues that have been highlighted here so the four issues that are highlighted are in water governance are first is ensuring availability of the water second is improving water use efficiency both by for irrigation also industry also third is tackling pollution and fourth is how to ensure recycle and reuse so under these broad headings we can uh, discuss the water governance issues so let's move on the on to the next uh, article may i can pause so that so again i think slides uh, finished so that's why uh, we had to pause the video so let's continue forward next article is uh, jal jeevan mission jal jeevan mission har ghar jal so there is a detailed analysis of jal jeevan mission which is the theme article the theme uh, on which uh, the present uh, yojana is focused so the aim is as we have already discussed is to ensure that we reach all rural households by 2024 to provide uh, um, we achieve the sustainable development target 6 six, 6 uh, six years ahead of the time so what is what are the major Uh, highlights of this jal jeevan mission first is there is a focus on service delivery previously we used to focus on infrastructure creation so right now the yeah, focus has shifted from assured uh, this uh, uh, merely infrastructure creation for water related issues to assured service delivery so in all villages with water quality so focus is both on quantity as well as quality in order to ensure that quality re reaches there is a provision of uh, at least 5% in each village preferably women to train to uh, use field testing kits to test water quality at village 
level. Second is one is service delivery. Second aspect of this mission is a special focus on children. Because children are most susceptible to waterborne diseases and they consider very uh, uh, considerably spend uh, a considerable time on uh, educational spaces like schools, the Anganwadi centers. So the mission also focus on uh, um, ensuring water availability in on these institutions. So that portable water is available there. Third focus area about the mission is making water everyone, everybody's business. Business. So from village level onwards, we have to prepare village action plans, which would be prepared by village water and sanitation committee. So what is a village action plan? How would it be made? Village action plan would involve, first of all, gap analysis of water supply. How much gap is there? Second, water demand in a village would be quantified. How much is used for drinking? What? How much for agriculture? How much for cattle? Third step for village action plan would be focus on source sustainability. Is the source sustainable? Then grey water management, then proposal of water related schemes, then focus on user charges where, where the users would be encouraged to, community would be encouraged to contribute to it so that water is, uh, the water is respected as a resource because monetary value would be attached to it and use of appropriate technology. So uh, this is the focus area, uh, third focus area of uh, Jal Jeevan Mission. Also, there is a provision of Pani Samitis. So what is Pani Samitis? These are subcommittees of Gram Panchayat, which will consist of 10 to 15 members with at least 50% women, 25% from weaker sections, SAST, then 25% would be elected members. This Pani Samiti would be supported by Panchayat Secretary who would act as a secretary to the committee. So this is about the third component. So Jal Jeevan mission focus on service delivery, special focus on children, what making water everybody's business. And fourth is it focuses on involving the private and the private sector. And in fact, trusts, foundations, NGOs have been impaneled as sector partners. Fifth is there is a focus on technology, use of technology, a robust Jal Jeevan mission, IMIS management system is there to capture physical and financial progress through dedicated dashboards. At the same time, public finance management system would be used in order to ensure the financial flow. A mobile app would be launched for all stakeholders. Second is every water supply asset would be geotech. Geotech. Next uh, technology is that the household connections would be the name of household connection would be connected to Aadhaar. Who would be the head of household? The Aadhaar of head of household would be connected to our connection. So these are the steps. At the same time, these committees. So we have already discussed what would be the uh, what are these the constitution of village water and sanitation committee. 
so this village water and sanitation committee have certain roles so it will focus as local water utilities it will play a lead role in planning for water management it would mobilize and motivate the community it will ensure periodic water quality because we know uh, the uh, these testing kits would be made available and uh, they will collect uh, water use charges so that is uh, with regard to the this article where jal jeevan mission uh, comprehensive analysis, uh, analysis along with uh, aims and aims of the mission we already have discussed in the previous articles now what are the fundamental changes that this article is bringing about uh, this mission is bringing about focus on service delivery rather than infrastructure creation special focus on children where they go to various institutions like anganwadi workers and school uh, anganwadi centers and schools where for a provision of potable water would be made available focus on making water everybody's business through a uh, creation of uh, uh with village water and sanitation committee which have certain functions village water action plan water how the village action plan would be made then uh, uh, private sector collaboration then technology how the use of technology would be there so these are the provisions that uh, uh, with regard to jal jeevan mission next is about framework for, uh, article is about framework for seventh article is about framework for river rejuvenation this article in details discuss the namami gange program so namami gange as we know was launched in 2014 with the focus on the rejuvenation of ganga in its tributary so what is the implementation machine so what is the approach approach is a uh, there are two focus areas of the approach we have already discussed river basin management and focus on ecological flows to ensure water availability theek okay. hai so for the details what are the institutional architecture at the top, uh, top would be national ganga council headed by honorable prime minister then there will be empowered task force below it would be national mission for clean ganga uh, this national mission for clean ganga has been uh, is a, uh, is made an authority through environmental protection act 1986 so it would lay comprehensive framework for rejuvenation of ganga uh, river you know, which will integrate river tributaries wetlands flood plains springs everything related to river ganga would be there then at the state level state ganga committee then district ganga committee which would be headed by district magistrates so this is the institutional architecture now what is the focus of the program the program focus on four broad areas these four broad areas are first is nirmal ganga second is a viral ganga third is jan ganga and fourth is gyan ganga so what are the these areas nirmal ganga it focuses on pollution abatement what is whatever pollution is happening so a pollution abatement would be done in order to ensure nirmal ganga so how would it would be done creation of sewage infrastructure then industrial pollution would be tackled waste water is it is use and recycle rural sanitation solid waste management so all these focus are there next is aviral ganga so aviral is that the dhara aviral dhara that is unstopped for this thing so how it would be done is through maintaining ecological flow of water flow in the river ganga second is wetland ma mapping would be done along the uh, river and their conservation would be done then flood plains ganga flood plains would be protected conserved focus would be on sustainable agriculture then afforestation efforts would be done small uh, river 
rejuvenation would be focused on. Next is Jal Ganga, where people uh, river contact would be strengthened. How it is being done? First is river front, ghat, and crematoriums. Focus is there. Focus on community engagement through various events like Ganga Run. Then Ganga Amantaran, so which is a drafting expedition. Then Ganga Utsav, where the national river would be celebrated. Then there is Ganga Quest where quiz would be organized on River Ganga. Fourth is Ganga Gyan. It focuses on research and research in the water area. So there would be a focus on water quality monitoring. Mapping of Ganga would be done. Aquifer mapping and spring rejuvenation would be focused. Cultural mapping would also be done. Urban river management program, microbial diversity would be identified. So this is a framework of Namami Gange. And uh, we can say that this uh, article focuses on how Namami Gange was launched, what is the approach, what is the institutional structure to rejuvenate the River Ganga, National River Ganga, what are the four broad areas, Nirmal Ganga, Aviral Ganga, Jan Ganga, Gyan Ganga, which the, uh, this uh, thing is focusing on. Next is, next article is eighth article about groundwater management, groundwater management. So, Atal Bhujal mission is there, here. So what is that? Sometimes we feel that groundwater is an invisible water, but it is a critical ecosystem, which is helpful, which is important source of water. At the same time, it is critical for sustaining sustaining various ecosystems like lakes, wetlands, and woods. However, so, uh, but it is largely invisible. The users have no uh, knowledge about the aquifers. So because of that, the situation in India has worsened with regard to groundwater management. In fact, in India is the largest user of groundwater in the world. The use of uh, groundwater 60% for agriculture, 85% uh, is there, it supplies 85% of a rural drinking water supply and what uh, more than 50% of urban supply is there. So this is the significance of groundwater. It is a source of water for 60% agriculture, 85% rural drinking water, 50% of urban drinking water comes from the groundwater. So we should focus on groundwater management. What, but Astroil have efforts had certain defects. First of all, it did not focus on reducing demand of water through ensuring water use efficiency. Second is that it was a top-down approach with little community participation. Third was, very scheme, various schemes were implemented in isolation. Fourth was various learnings in, through research and efforts were not implemented on the ground. So in order to ensure that this is not there, Atal Bhujal Yojana was used, launched. So what is the focus of Atal Bhujal Yojana? It is to ensure sustainable groundwater management with community participation groundwater, sustainable groundwater management with community participation. So there would be a focus on inculcating behavioral change with regard to groundwater management. There would also be a focus on demand side reduction. Then it would be implemented in water stressed areas. The schemes would be implemented through a convergent manner. So all the uh, schemes related to uh, groundwater management, central state governments would be converged. And finally, community would lead the way. The best practices like Ralegao Siddhi case study, Hivri Bajar case study would be implemented throughout the country. So this is about 
how the uh, new mission is a drastic uh, change from the previous one. We should remember that uh, actually it is being implemented in seven states. We just now enumerated. It was launched in 2019 on 25th December, which is a good governance day. World Bank is supporting it. So this is there. So next article, let's move on to the next article, ninth article. It is about Swachhta movement continues. So we know that Swachh Bharat mission was, phase one was an enormous success. So what was the impact? In fact, global agencies are also saying that it is there. It, according to World Health Organization, it has saved lives. In fact, when India became open defecation free, 2019, so three lakh deaths due to diarrhea were avoided. Second is it saves environment also as per UNICEF. Also, there is a high rate of, of uh, re, uh, return on investment. So return on investment is 430% as per UNICEF. It also saves money. It is said that a household which is ODF free, uh, which is there in ODF free village will save approximately $720 in a year. So it is also creating jobs. These are data of global agencies, UNICEF, World Health Organization. Now the second phase, phase two of search bar that Arath has uh, launched where focus is on ODF plus. What is ODF plus? This ODF plus is different from the urban component. This is with regard to Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen component. It focuses on two aspects. Solid and liquid waste management and sustainability of the ODF status. So in phase two, criteria for a visually clean village is also given. Clean visually clean village is also given. So how, uh, how a village would be declared as a visually clean? When 80% of the households and all the public places have a minimal litter and minimal stagnant water, and there is no plastic dump. So there should be a plastic segregation and collection system. 80% household and public institutions should have solid and liquid management arrangements. Public spaces should be clean. There should be a functional toilet facility in all households. So this is with regard to Swachh Bharat Mission phase two. Next article is with regard to Safe, adequate, and sustainable drinking water. My tenth article: Safe, adequate, and sustainable drinking water. So, uh, in fact, water is uh, part of water and health uh, linkage is being dra drawn here. So, it is said that uh, in the Alma Ata conference in uh, 1978. The one of the basic component of health for all was availability of potable and safe drinking water. Under SDG 6 also focuses on ensuring safe and affordable water for all. Then uh, there are water diseases also which are related to health. So what should be done in order to ensure that this linkage is taken care? We should converge health and water. By prior dies water schemes in villages, strengthening current schemes, then surveillance of drinking water quality should be focused on in order to ensure that health, uh, the uh, safe drinking water reaches the households. Next article is about centrality of women in water management. As we have said that uh, water uh, women are key stakeholders in this. So we know that um, women uh, are uh, in the rural communities are involved in the collection of the drinking water. Then they are health takers of the family also. So water and health linkage we recently only, in the last article only we focused. Then they are water carriers and water managers. So they 
when there would be a provision of functional household type collection in the various villages, there would be a central role of women that they will be playing. So how women can contribute to water management? First of all, we have village water and sanitation community. 50% of them would be women. Member of this would be women. Second is, it is found that elected representatives, if they are women, so they are able to better implement the water-related schemes. And this uh, international agencies are saying. Se se second, the third aspect is that there is a special recognition of women in water-related schemes. Fourth is gender sensitization of the staff is being done uh, in the Jal Jeevan mission. Fifth is training of women is being done in order to know, help them know how to assess the quality of water. Focus is on SSGs, which are mostly women-led. So this is the article which focuses on how women are playing a key role in water management. Next article, in, in, inside in 13th article, the uh, uh, 12th article is again technology and uh, Jaljivan mission. We have already discussed it, how technology is playing a role, creation of dashboards, Aadhaar linkage, foot app connection, public financial management system, uh, the exploration of internet of things based remote monitoring, digital wall and remote command and control center, all these technological interventions are being done in Jal Jeevan mission. N last article we are having India's inland water, inland waterways plan. So, so after independence, uh, inland waterway authority of India was established in 1986 to help maintain energy infrastructure for key inland waterways. At that time, five national waterways were there. These were from, first was on River Ganga, Bhavari Girati, Googly between Haldi and Halabad. Then there was this on River Brahmaputra, we had from uh, Sadia to Bangladesh border. Third was Kakinada Pudicherry stretch. Then uh, West Coast Canal. Then Talcha to Damra. So, India has an elaborate network of inland waterways in the shape of rivers, canals, backwaters, and creeks. Over the total length, we that can be navigated 20,000 kilometers, out of which 17,000 is in rivers and 2,000 to 500 can be used for mechanized crafts. 20,000 kilometers can be used. So what are the steps that are being taken in order to promote inland waterway? First is that, uh, as we know, we realized later on that majority of the waterways were under the control of state governments, but state governments were not having enough resources. So the constitution provided that if the center wants to play a role in waterways development, it would have to nationalize the waterways. So the uh, act was passed in 2016 and uh, 106 additional waterways were nationalized. Now we have 106 plus 5, 111 national waterways. Second was, <clears throat> Ministry of uh, Shipping in 2020 said that the all user charges from waterways would be removed. Usage charges would be removed for three years. For three years, there would be no usage charges. This will help encourage people to uh, take the uh, inland waterways to supply logistics. Then recently, a memorandum of, uh, of understanding was signed between Indi Indian Waterways Authority of India and MOL Group. MOL Group is a global leader in gas carrier. So it would be using National Waterway 1 and 2 in order to supply gas. So it, uh, the benefit of uh, usage of uh, waterways would be that it is a more uh, environment friendly method uh, and it would reduce the logistic uh, logistics. Fourth is India also launched maritime 
India Vision 2030, which uh, includes a 10 year plan for infrastructure creation and improvement of services and maritime region. So, with this, I think uh, uh, Yojana uh, is covered and uh, the notes we can uh, would also be made available. I would like you to like, comment uh, the videos and also subscribe to our channel and join our Telegram channel also. Thank you so much.